everybody, this is Jason. Welcome back for another draft at the Draft Factory. Today we're piloting a nice little red-black vampires madness deck. Just kind of came together after the first pack. And uh, this hand looks pretty keepable. Going second here, but I don't think that's going to be a big deal. Oh, no one drop, but I have one. We'll probably end up having, this might be the red-green werewolves deck. I saw a lot of werewolves going around in the draft. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did pass that up. Let's uh, just crack in here. Drop my Sinister Concoction since it's the only play I have. Next turn, I'll probably be playing um, Crow of Dark Tidings just to build out my board. He's not going to have any way to block my insolent neonate, but I want to have something bigger on the field instead of uh, instead of just growing my one creature. So let's crack in here. Alternately, I might just trade it. F I might just trade the uh, crow for something because he's a little bit ahead on. Uh, he's a little bit ahead on damage here. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and trade this for the gibbering fiend. Just reduce some of the incoming damage. Get a creature off the board. I don't want to give him a weapon with the harvest hand, so. Hmm. That's interesting. I think I'm just going to run out the uh, Stormkirk Mentor here. Give my uh, Neonate plus one plus one. I'll drop my uh, Masquerade when it's more beneficial to me. I'm going to get a plus one counter on, uh, on the Neonate either way, so I may as well just do it this way, get another creature on the board. I'm kind of hoping to get another black mana. That way I can actually play my black cards and be able to hold up Sinister Concoction. Actually, I don't think it's that big of a deal because I can I can just use it and run out Stentia Masquerade on the... Uh, Well, it's a little late to be thinking about it now. He didn't drop anything. He's probably sitting on cards of all his other color. I don't really want to swing in with the mentor here. Yeah, I'll just attack with the neonate. I don't really want to trade my mentor for that 2-2. Hmm. Let's see how he blocks. Sure. Um, well, I'm going to eat that, and I'm also going to play the Masquerade. Well, yeah, he's going to try to kill both my creatures with that. So I can either blow up his 2-2 with Sinister Concoction and play the Masquerade on the discard, which will allow him to still kill my Stormkirk Mentor. Yeah, that's probably just the best play here. I mean, alternately, I could sack my uh, Neonate and play out the 
the masquerade that way, but then he gets to keep all his creatures, and I don't really like that. I'd rather just lose the one card. Unfortunately, he gets to uh, he gets to play another creature before I get to play anything else. But at least he'll have no board going into it. He'll kill the mentor with this. I really wanted to run out my mad profit but it's probably best that he got to kill my uh my 4-2 with that instead of having my mad pro profit to target sure this neonate's gonna start growing now Um, I think I'm going to run out Mad Prophet and Indulgent Aristocrats. I could just play from under the floor, floorboards, but um, I'd rather get my Mad Prophet online for when I start drawing into more of my Madness cards, and I want to be able to start using its ability to start digging through my deck. Plus, I don't think my life is low enough right now that I really have to worry about the uh, the damage from this guy. He's really stuck on lands. He's in a bad spot. And I have no idea why he's attacking. I mean, what is that? Get stuff? Ooh, Flame Blade Angel. It's a good card. Let's, um... Let's crack in with the Neonate. And, uh... I'm gonna... Well, I think I'll just pass. No, I don't want to pass without playing anything because that uh, Convicted Killer is gonna flip. So I'm gonna Mad Profit right here and use from under from under the floorboards and draw another card. Um I think I hold on to the land because I might need it to uh, activate Call the Bloodlines next turn. I have to be careful of that Flame Blade Angel, though. I'm not ahead enough ahead on life that I can afford to just be taking a bunch of damage. Then again, if I hit lethal and uh, the lethal damage goes through, that uh, trigger will still be on the stack, so that's something to keep in mind. Wow, he's going for it. Let's see. If he has... Yeah, he has to have Uncaged Fury in his hand. Because that's really the only way that this is lethal. But I can't block that either. It has Menace. Well, that's frustrating. Let's hope he doesn't have it. No, doesn't have it. So what is he... What is he hoping to do here? Well, in that 
case, I'm just going to sack it and draw a card. Let's um, see, I have six, seven, eight, nine damage on board. Let's see. Is there any way I can turn this into lethal? Because I only have the one vampire on board. So I think I have to play out the land here because, well, let's see. I play Call the Bloodlines. I have three mana left open. If I play, let's see. If I sack the land to Call the Bloodlines, I get one creature. Sack a zombie to give both of my guys plus one, plus one. If I play out the land... So if I play out the land, I can play Sanguinary, Va uh, Sanguinary Mage. Then I can sack a zombie after combat, or before com... No. Bef do I do it before or after combat? Um, well, he has lethal on the board right now if I swing with everything. And that guy has menace. This is a really rough position to be in. Um... I need at least two blockers. If he has any removal, I'm just done. Um, which means I have to leave back three blockers. Okay, so... If I swing with everything but two zombies, that puts him down to six. Then I can leave back three blockers. And sack a creature to pump my guys. Or do I sack the land and get a 1-1 one, one and swing and play Sanguinary Mage and then swing with four guys and put him down to four. But that puts me at seven life. Okay, I, I'm I'm gonna take the more conservative play here. Okay, this is I took a long time on that. Okay, let's let's hope this works. Shoot, I just realized I'm gonna lose life on this. I'm gonna take three damage, gain one back. Uh, if I do it like this, I don't lose any life. Uh, this is, I think this is the best I can do.
that flame blade angel just put a wrench in my plans and di I didn't even realize it until after uh, that's lethal two pieces of equipment on the same creature yep well that was unfortunate um Okay. I need... What do I need? Fighting rain... Maybe. Um, I think Alms of the Vein might actually be decent here. Um, I'm going to want to save this Sinister Concoction for... That flame blade angel. Um, I'm not sure Geist Blast is very good here. I mean, it hits some of his threats, but I think that my creatures can rumble with his effectively enough that that's not really a big deal. He did have multiple one toughness creatures. So dual shot might come in handy here. I don't think... I mean, I feel like I didn't see a lot of his deck. Either that or he oddly managed to go mono red. Um, the thing is, I don't feel like I, I saw enough of his creatures to really be able to tell what's going to be effective. Like, dual shot might be effective against like two of his cards, but... But it's not really effective against the against the devils because he just uses them to ping off my creatures anyway. Alms of the Vein be fine if I end up in like a race, but it was really just that flame blade angel that did it to me. And I don't really have anything to deal with that in my uh in my sideboard here. I just have to be more wary about what I use my removal on. I think I'm just going to ship this back as is. Um, yeah, this is fine. I'm going to hope for a discard outlet. He might just be mono red. Which is kind of crazy, because I saw a lot of great red cards. Let's, uh... Let's get rid of that. I don't want to deal with that. Because that's going to trade straight up for my mage, and then my Stormcrook Mentor won't have anything to, uh... Won't have anything to counter on to. Is he stuck on mana? He's stuck on mana. Wow. I may just from under the floorboards next turn because um, I can't really I can't really pale rider into that. I'm just not going to get any value off of it. Mono red, who'd have thought? He's playing some mediocre cards to get there, and that's not going to help him. Although now I can't really attack with my mentor either. Let's, uh, yeah, let's just run out from under the floorboards. Maybe I'll draw into another uh, into another card I can combo with Pale Rider. That's a really slow card, though. The Magnifying Glass. I'm uh, I'm not sure how much value value is going to get off of that because he has to sink a lot of mana into it. 
just to investigate. I'm in a pretty good spot right now, although I'd like to draw into uh, some of my other tricks. I'm not sure what he's considering. Maybe, okay. If he wants to go two for one with my Sanguinary Mage, I'm fine with that. Sure. Let's, um, let's run out the profit. Um, so if I attack with everything, he eats the Sanguinary Mage, trades with the Mentor, goes down to seven. Since he's going to be sitting with that 2-1 the whole time, I'm just going to swing in with the Mentor and make him trade for it. I mean, it's going to happen anyway, and the Mentor is just going to be sitting there not doing anything otherwise. Nothing I can really do about that. Let's uh, draw a card here. That's good. Let's do that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just going to give him haste and just start cracking in. Uh, do I put him down to seven? I feel like he's struggling for things to do. I think I want to put him down to seven. I want to get this Pale Rider on the board, but I don't want to lose the draw from the Mad Prophet either. Well, let's see what I draw. Another land. Sure, I'll play it. I just didn't want to hit another dead card on my next draw. Okay, so he's sitting on, um, he's sitting on, um, the Dan or Devil's Playground. So I have to be careful about how I attack here. You know what, I'm gonna Mad Profit first, see what I draw, it's not bad. Let's uh let's crack in with Olivia's Blood Sworn. Sure. That's unfortunate, but I have another two one flyer, so Investigate. And now since he's gone and done that, I can just crack in with everything. Yep, okay. That's uh, game two. He's playing a lot of mediocre cards just to make playables. Let's see, Inner Struggle, Reduced to Ashes. 
uh, hulking devil. I think I think it's worth bringing in dual shot here. I've seen three uh, one toughness cards plus the uh, uh, dev the uh, dance with the devil. So I'm gonna bring in dual shot. Um, what do I take out for it? I can probably just take out Geist Blast. It's going to be about the same thing, probably. Um, or maybe Uncaged Fury. Is Uncaged Fury doing anything in this matchup? Not really. I don't have any... Um, I don't have any really big creatures to really make it go off. And it doesn't look like I'm really trying to trade up with anything. So I think Uncaged Fury for Dual Shot is fine. And uh, let's go in for game three. This could be a lot better. Um, if I draw a red mana, I'm in a great position. Um, if I don't, I'm a little screwed. Well, I have more red mana than black mana, so I'm going to keep it and hope for the best. I'm also on the draw. Not a red mana. red mana come on mountain he's gonna let that flip isn't he oh no okay now I just have to find out if I get to make it flip Thank God. Okay. Let's, uh, we're going to do this. Value right here. Deals X damage. No, that's not going to do me any good. Let's, um, you know what? Let's just run out one of these and I will wait for my fourth mana before blowing Abyssin's Judgment because as it stands right now it's only going to hit for one damage if I um, if I madness it and I'm not low enough on health that I mind taking another shot here a breakneck rider red mana Okay, let's, um, you know what, since he's walling up anyway, let's see, do I kill these before they become a threat? I think so. Just because I don't want him passing his turn, and then I can't kill that thing with one damage anymore. Alternately, I could have um, I could have ran run out the Twins of Marauder Estate, but again, if he lets those flip next turn, then it isn't as nearly good of a blocker as it could have been. Here I can still chump block or I can just take the damage or whatever I want to do. And I think I'll just take the damage because I can crack back uh, and gain a life that way. Let's see what he plays, though. It's 
So my uh, life total is pretty high right now. I'm not too worried. Okay. That's... <laughs> I have a nice little double play here for you. One, two, three. One. Sack Fiery Temper. Nuke your dude with Fiery Temper. And make a dude. And now I get to crack for four. Thank you very much. That that was a great tempo play. <laughs> Uh, he has more cards than I do, though, so I'm a little concerned about that. Wow, a second tormenting voice. He really went all in on that mono red. Oh, dual shot, okay. I just basically traded a card for nothing, but okay. Do you have a one drop? Nope. Let's, uh. You know what? I was going to call the Bloodlines out Twins of Marauder Estate, but since I have enough mana to do, to do this, I'm just going to Pale Rider it out here. gets me a couple of nice sized bodies on the board and uh, I don't know when I'm going to draw another Madness card I don't even know how many Madness cards I have left in my deck I know I have at least a couple but if I draw into another one I can still just call the Bloodlines it out and this makes good use of all my mana so he's two mana away from playing Flame, Flame Blade Angel that means that he doesn't have a lot of good threats against what I have on the board. That's not going to do anything. Sure. I mean, I'm going to attack with it anyway, so... Um, I, um, I could sack my mage and make a 1-1, one, one, uh, creature, or I could just hold it to play another turn, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna play out Twins of Marauder Estate this time around. I just need to figure out if I want to um, toss one of my creatures to make another one this turn or not. Um, one thing that I have to keep in mind, too, is if he's playing any more, um, any more werewolves, I need something to keep them from flipping. If I make a 1-1 one, one now and a 1-1 one, one next turn, I'll have two... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 damage on the board against that and whatever other blocker he comes up with. He'll have to block, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, let's see, 6, 9. He'll have to block at least one of the three power creatures either way. I think, has he played X, uh, he hasn't played the five mana removal spell yet, but if he plays that next turn, I like keeping the sanguinary mage just in case, um, just in case he throws down any more, um, any more werewolves. I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to kill him next turn anyway, so... He 
He has, uh, I think he has Dance with the Devils in his hand. Yeah, let's attack. See what happens. So he's going to basically double chump block. Oh, inner struggle. Okay. Sure. Puts him down to three. That's not going to do anything for him. Let's uh, make another dude. <laughs> and this is pretty much game, isn't it? He has to block here. There's just no way around it. That should just be lethal. Yeah, that'll do it. That's uh, that madness really pulled its weight. The the call to bloodlines was fantastic. Just being able to chain those madness cards back to back was amazing. Um, he seemed to be playing mono red, which was interesting. But his uh, his deck was playing a lot of subpar cards, so. I mean, he got the color consistency, but it doesn't do him any good if all my cards are just better than his. Anyway, that's, re that's the uh, end of round one. We'll see you again in round two.